All right, so the plan involves going through this crawl space. This crawl space goes up under the first layer of the house and the cable run, as you can see here, we have a million different cable runs on this house, actually runs through the crawl space and pokes through the wall to the basement right next to where our fiber box is. So the plan is actually to hijack that cable run, coaxial run, because we don't need it in the crawl space and punch out here, go underneath and find some place we can trench under the sidewalk here or lift it up or go between it or something that we can get deep enough to still qualify and then make it across and punch in the side of the building here so we can poke right in where the server rack will be so I can distribute it to the rest of the studio. But I think this is gonna be easier said than done. Today begins an exciting new journey that honestly wasn't that exciting. It was a fairly standard kind of boring procedure, but I wanted to get ROI on the 200 gigs and hours upon hours of footage I captured for it. We are running internet from my house where the fiber line for our actual internet comes in to the garage so I can have networking between the computers and actually have internet out there where I need to stream and make content. For this, I am using a 1000 foot spool of CAT 6A. We were, I originally went with CAT 6 because I knew that over short distances it could do 10 gig. Over long distances it does not. So I returned that to Home Depot, ordered me this giant spool of CAT 6A from Amazon, unfortunately. Uh, True Cable is the brand that seemed to show up cheapest. This is indoor rated, but as far as I could tell, the actual rating for indoor versus outdoor for these spools simply went to uh, basically UV protection and this is going to be entirely shielded from any sunlight or exposure to the actual elements you know, outside. So to me, it wasn't a big deal and so far it's hold up, held up just fine through giant rainstorms and snow and freezing temperatures. So we're, we should be good. So the plan is to use conduit, you know, plastic PVC, whichever this is, conduit to go up under the sidewalk to get from the house there, as I explained a minute ago. We only have so much conduit to work with here, and we have to actually <laughs> dig a trench to get to the garage in the first place and to get up under the sidewalk, which was... Not a lot of fun. You can kind of see at first we were just kind of poking around trying to figure out what the plan is and then we just had to start digging. And so we had some of these leftover just like wood trim and wood stakes from what garbage was left in the garage that we were going to start poking holes with. First we had to dig out actual ground to start digging through and of course on the flower bed side of that was lava rock which is who not fun to dig through but can I just say shout out to this uh, chest mounted GoPro mount because while half the time the angle's not in the right place, it looks pretty sick. It looks like I'm making like one of those, I forgot what the movie was, but that first person shooter movie. Then just a matter of using the stake to poke a hole until we can get up under the sidewalk. We were hoping we would be able to just lift one of the parts out uh, since you know they're cut into rectangles usually. We were hoping we would just be able to lift one out, but they are completely connected on this chunk, unfortunately and it would be way too messy to try to trench it around. So we are just digging straight under. We've got quite the big trench going and just hammering the stake through. This is admittedly like the hardest part of the entire ordeal and what we spent the most time on was just trying to get a hole cut under the sidewalk and many hours of hammering and shoving a piece of wood through some dirt under some concrete later. <laughs> as ridiculous as that sounds, uh, we ended up getting through. We also used an extra section of the conduit to kind of poke through as well to get the right size and to figure out where our two, because we kind of went at it from both sides trying to figure out where we were lining up and that was helping to bridge our little tunnels we have dug. Now you may notice, of course, no, we're not doing it 18 to 24 inches below the dirt to be up to code, uh, below the frost line or whatever, but so far, like I said, it's in the conduit. If, if we went below that line, we'd theoretically be clear to not put it in conduit and to just use the raw cable. Uh, but since we're doing the whole thing in conduit, it shouldn't matter too much. And like I said, we've had the biggest snowstorm we've had in years on top of tons of rain and stuff since this has gone up and haven't had a single issue with it. Uh, eventually it got super dark and it was really hard to see anything we were doing. Uh, but the first day was pretty much dedicated to digging that tunnel and then it got dark. This was of course after my dad came home from work. Throughout this whole process, we were using a fishing line, which was just some super thin communication cable my dad had. Uh, ran through the entire conduit so that we always had a fishing line for pulling our cable through later on and that is what we kind of ended with with that day 
Uh, we punched a hole in the side of the garage with just a hole saw uh, going through the wall and then put a little junction box to connect the conduit to the garage and sealed all that up so we were ready to rock for the next day. And then I would just put a proper uh, connection box on the wall on the inside of the garage later on. The next time we got to work on this, which was a few days later, we actually fished the Cat 6A, which was quite the experience with things breaking and not going as intended. But fish it, fish one line one way to get a singular run through from that part up against the garage through up all the conduit and then up underneath the house, giving us enough slack to do all the cable management and stuff that we required. And then we had to fish it back the other way. And then my dad was doing work in the crawl space to get it run where it needed to run. Uh, although you can't see much from the footage and get it poked through the wall inside the house We had this little box where an old cable run was there were like 10 different ancient cable and satellite Coaxial runs throughout this house that nobody took down whenever they got new ones set up And so they're strapped everywhere on the outside of the house and the inside So we just hijacked this hole in the wall for a coaxial run to push the cables through It was tough, but eventually we got it situated and that was pretty much it Fairly, <laughs> fairly, like I said, mundane, but like I said, I wanted ROI for how much footage I shot and because people wanted to know what we were doing. From there, I kind of ticked a lot of people off on Twitter when I showed what we were doing. I have a, uh, a two keystone box where the hole through the garage was poked, where I have the two runs that we put together terminated into keystones, and then those are run into one of my switches. And then I have a few different switches hooked up because my original networking setup was entirely reliant on uh, fiber. It was on SFP Plus connectors. And I was using transceivers to go from SFP Plus to Cat7 or whatever at the apartment whenever I did need RJ45 connections. And for the short runs we were doing there, that's fine. But we are uh, 10 or so feet over the 98 meter requirement to actually make a 10 gig uplink with those transceivers on converting from SFP plus to RJ45 and so I was only getting about 5 gigabits per second and had some weird connectivity issues I also had to redo my key sense a couple timeouts I've I'd never done that before so it was a learning experience from there though I ran it to switches I picked up another switch which was about 500 bucks that has eight uh, 10 gigabit RJ45 ports, which was the cheapest one I could find that was also silent because I need it, you know, in here where I record. And then I split those out among the switches and did, I believe, eight different runs throughout the rest of the studio. And I, what I ticked a lot of people on Twitter off about is I'm doing these outside of the walls because uh, between the flex duct being present in the attic, meaning that we can't really get to where the walls meet the ceiling or the attic rather, uh, to kind of fish them down the wall because we would just be crushing those and it's all in our way and all of that. Some of the angles that the roof is at on this garage is too steep for us to actually mess with any of that. Like we, we ended up not being able to mess with a lot of that, which is why some of the vents are so offset from the wall because it was so such a steep angle. And so realistically, it just wasn't going to work out, especially again, I was doing all of this, the, the internal runs myself. Dad, my dad handled the outside stuff and then I was doing all the internal stuff. And we have this three inch uh, wood run that's along the entire floor. So other than getting it over the garage door for the initial run, everything else is completely hidden. So I have a six and a two uh, keystone box for the receiving ends on the server rack side. And then I just have it to two intake boxes at each of the ports. So I have two at my main editing side of the desk, two at the other side of the desk two kind of in the middle of the room and then two over by the retro setup. So I have 10 gig where I need it and then I can use individual one gig switches in any particular place where I need additional hookups. And so far, once I got the keystones connected properly with the right tools for the first time, didn't go super well and everything kind of sealed up, it has been running super well. While I had the tools and was working on stuff and had made a Home Depot run, I added these big O three or four inch wheels to the bottom of the retro TV stand that's going to hold the BVM. They're rated for like 175 pounds each and there's six of them on the entire unit. Uh, so theoretically for a 112 pound BVM and some consoles, it should be enough. And so far, yep, it's held up quite well. They just went in the place where the feet that we originally had on it went. And it's still really tough to move around because there is so much weight getting the wheels to pivot into the position that they need to be in to actually start rolling in the direction I want to go is often a lot of activation energy. We also cut some pieces out of this hard oak wood. 
uh, to act as little corner adjustments so that there was no side to side flex. This wasn't really an issue before, but we also used wood glue before. And I built this back up without adding wood glue in. And there was a little bit of side to side flex, especially with the wheels, but these corner pieces lock it up like that thing is going nowhere. But that's not the only thing we tackled before I really started setting things up. The second part was tackling what I wanted to be my kind of signature neon look by putting LED strips along the ceiling. Now this was an idea I got from Wendell at level one. Uh, he, had, he basically hung a piece of trim around the ceiling and put LED strips on top of that and bounced them off the ceiling. And that was my original plan. And then it just kind of didn't work out for a variety of reasons. And so I ended up finding on Amazon these uh, neat little LED tracks that are designed for this very purpose. And I have a lot of extra that I'm probably going to use in a variety of different situations. Uh, but it's basically designed to put the LED strips in them and then help diffuse them so they look a little bit more neon and not just a bunch of individual hot spots. And so basically we just attach the little clips that retain the aluminum tracks every 10 or 20 inches along the ceiling based on how many, you know, how long I wanted the RGB strips to go. And then I have a Wi-Fi controllable RGB LED set that then ideally I'll be able to hook up through if this then that to my stream deck, which will be pretty cool. But I have it run in both, put up in one of the corners and then split off in both directions. And I found that I could get two strips off of a single split because, you know, it has two power connectors. Uh, two strips off of a single split before it starts having power drop off and weird color and brightness issues. And so I sent one one way around the corner of the wall up to the workbench and then the other the other way down towards the garage door until I ran out of strip. And it took a lot of work for my wife and I to get all this together, but the end result is absolutely phenomenal. Oh yeah, boy. We got neon vibes up in here. 